Hello everyone, my name's Alex Rutter. Um, I'm the Artistic Director of Whole Hog Theatre and I'm also a Resident Director at Nelke Planning in Tokyo who specialise in producing anime theatre productions. Um, and Whole Hog Theatre has been specialising in Anglo-Japanese collaborative work uh, since 2013. Um, and we work with British, uh, Japanese and British East Asian performers in the UK and Japan. Um, our work's all about challenging stereotypes, championing, championing diversity um, and encouraging new audiences to the theatre, which is where anime comes in, because this is a really exciting uh, new genre of theatre that's coming out of Japan. Um, it's an it's a emerging genre that's coming out of Tokyo and it's unique to Japan. Um, and there's various different kind of incarnations of it, if you like. And one, uh, the sort of uniquely Japanese one is called 2.5D uh, and that stands for um, like uh, yeah 2.5 dimension so it's somewhere between the 3D realm of traditional theatre and the 2D realm of, of anime so it's it's you should kind of think of it like a genre in and of itself um, and it's a little bit I would describe it as somewhere between like an idol concert and a traditional western musical like you might see on Broadway or in the West End um, and it's um, something that's mainly done in Japanese with Japanese performers out here, but it's something that is actually the Japanese producers who make this kind of work are really looking to expand into the West, um, uh, well, internationally indeed. And uh, there was a production of Sailor Moon, for instance, that went to um, New York and Washington DC, I believe, um, a couple of years ago. So there's just just starting to share this genre uh, internationally. Um, and one of the big differences I would say from, for example, a Western musical and a um, anime musical, um, they aren't all musicals, but most of them are of the big productions, um, is that there will be less less songs um, and it will be very faithful adaptation as opposed to um, a sort of more creative adaptation so they'll be sticking very closely to the original costumes to the original story uh, and another really key and interesting difference is that they will actually serialize the the productions much in the way that they do um, in a manga or anime um, so you know you'll have there's already been many versions, for example, of Sailor Moon, of Prince of Tennis, um, and several productions of a Naruto production, all sorts of things. So they'll, they'll do, run for a couple of weeks, um, and then they'll bring the production down in quite a big theatre in, in Tokyo, and then they will do the next production, which kind of looks at a different part of the story. Um, so it's a really different model in that sense, and it's quite exciting to be able to go back to the theatre and see like the next chapter, if you like. Um, but um, there's, there's quite a difference in the way, for example, that Whole Hog Theatre approaches um, adaptations of anime and the way that uh, Nalke Planning um, uh, approaches those adaptations. So um, you'll get something that sort of feels like a living cosplay. It's like the anime has jumped out from, or the manga has jumped out from the page and is on, on stage in, in the 2.5D genre. But with other anime adaptations, um, uh, the like in Whole Hog style or, or other styles don't necessarily follow that. So there might be more flexibility on the story. Um, there'll be, it's very much all drawn from the original, but we won't be so um, kind of, um, won't stick necessarily to the exact aesthetic. We'll try and develop that into a theatrical world. Interestingly enough, in terms of the various types of theatre, um, anime theatre, you've got the 2.5D world, you've got sort of more uh, adaptations that are sort of more similar to what Whole Hog creates. And you've also got Super Kabuki, um, which, so there's been a One Piece Kabuki adaptation, um, which I have had the privilege to see. There's also been a Naushka Kabuki uh, that has happened recently. Um, and that is a phenomenal sort of meeting of, of worlds because Kabuki again is sort of notoriously inaccessible and it's a uh, very traditional Japanese that even Japanese don't understand and they have to have audio guides to help them through. Um, and um, I hope we can show you this little clip of um, uh, the, the One Piece um, Kabuki because as you can see it is just 
uh, it fits with the style of kabuki performance. Um, so they have something called a mie pose, which is very much like an anime power pose, you know, where you've got the character and the wind in their hair and that kind of thing. And then they do it on stage and they just strike that pose and you go, oh my God, yeah, kabuki actors know how to do the anime power pose. Um, they have that training and it's somehow, there's something about it that really, really fits. And it's, it's much more difficult to uh, export it's something they only do in Japan. All of the performers are male. All of them are in kabuki families. So it's extremely difficult to access. But that's another side of, you know, just in terms of just all the different ways that anime is now being brought into the live sphere. That's another one that is, is very exciting and it definitely works. Although it probably wouldn't be something you could see outside of Japan, unfortunately. I have worked on um, a few productions here. Um, and uh, I'm working on developing quite a few more. Um, I've also been creative director on uh, Magia Recordo, the musical, which is based on the Madoka Magica franchise. Um, and that was starring Keaki Zaka 46. So that's another difference between perhaps um, UK or um, theater outside of Japan and in Japan, that they will often have like an entire idol group or 10 members for example filling all the key roles so there's kind of that excitement for fans who can come and see their favorite idol in their favorite character um and it's as if they've come to life on stage um so i've worked on those things and obviously i've also um a whole of theater did an adaptation of princess mononoke back in 2013 with the kind permission of studio ghibli which was uh the most incredible experience um i'm still not sure anything will live up to to do to doing that um and obviously yes we're also doing an adaptation of makoto shinkai's the garden of words that was due to come out should have been on in london right now in fact um in august um but hopefully we'll be coming to the uk stage next year in london and also in tokyo Yes, I've been asked to talk a little bit about uh, the Princess Mononoke adaptation because that was indeed uh, the first time um, that Hayao Miyazaki-san has ever given his permission for one of his works to be staged um, anywhere, including in Japan. Um, and it was a really fascinating process for us. We couldn't believe we were able to work with something as um, precious as Princess Mononoke. And we did it in London and in Tokyo. They uh, showed in Japan, um, as you will see, just to give you an idea of how we actually approached Hayao Miyazaki. Um, we sent a video to Studio Ghibli, and we don't know if uh, they read pitch, um, but we do know that he watched this video. So all this text here is just saying, from England, for the first time comes um, an adaptation from uh, of. Um, in Princess Monoke, okay. uh, and you see this these um, this puppet that's happening uh, in the background. Now this was actually filmed with my my family at a family holiday, and it's literally made out of balloons and bed sheets. Now uh, I had a colleague who said, "Do not, for any reason, send this to Hayao Miyazaki um, because it is just you and your family playing around with some uh, recycled materials." But I insisted that we did send it, uh, and that turned out to be the best idea we, we could have had, um, simply because I think it really demonstrated that we were really building something that spoke to the ecological ethics of the film. We were using found objects, and that we were approaching this not from a commercial point of view, but as a small creative company who really loved the work. Um, and it just demonstrated how we were going to physicalize it by having a puppet you know, for in this case this is the character of uh, Moro the the wolf god and he watched the video apparently and within 30 seconds said yeah why not um I wasn't there but that was so, so the story goes when back when I didn't speak any Japanese um yeah so uh, we actually then had a load of Ghibli representatives come come to the UK to see a workshop we put together four hours worth of just us in rehearsal um playing about with some ideas, showing them how the puppetry was going to work. We did some incarnations of Nargo, um, the, the demon boar god, uh, with videotape. We did things with, um, as you can see here, we've got um, the Daidarabochi all made out of um, uh, du old dust sheets. Um, and it just was um, 
amazing to obviously have them in the room absolutely terrifying of course um but to be able to show them how sort of organic uh this was this production was going to be uh and how we were going to use found materials to to create that uh Toshio Suzuki-san um came to see the production Miyazaki-san was working on the wind rises I believe at the time so he was chained to his desk um but we were very privileged to have uh Suzuki-san uh come and see us uh and based on that he enjoyed it enough to actually invite the whole team to go and visit Studio Ghibli. Um, we've got a photo of that uh, that I hope you guys can can see of us all with Miyazaki-san, Suzuki-san and our wonderful signed. It was such a privilege to meet all of the people we met at Studio Ghibli and so amazing to think that they may have been inspired by something that we did, having been inspired by their film. And I'm endlessly full of admiration for the opportunity that they gave us and their open-mindedness um, and the way they approached the whole thing. We will forever be uh, pinching ourselves that that was able to happen um, and incredibly grateful. Yeah, it's a really good question. Why did we pick Princess Mononoke to, to stage? Um, and there was, I guess, two really fundamental reasons. And one was just, I mean, it's my personal favourite um, and it was something that really spoke to me and something I said in um, an interview in, in Tokyo at the time when we were announcing the production was that it, it was utterly amazing to me that a film that was set in Muromachi, the Muromachi era in um, Japan, uh, it's all about Japanese people, Japanese gods and that period of history, that it could still speak to me as a British girl with at that time no understanding of Japan no experience of the language or the culture and it really made me feel like I could go into my local woods and sort of sort of feel the death of the the shishigami um and feel that sort of loss of of natural habitat on a kind of emotional level which I think is what Mononoke is is all about um so there was just a real connection with it and it, that was something we really wanted to explore because although it's just not coming from our culture the fact that it can have that universal impact, despite being set, being so uniquely Japanese, uh, is quite phenomenal. So that was a big part of it, that, that passion for that particular film. But also the ethics of it, I think the fact that it is a epic ecological fable in a time when, you know, we are at a sort of key point in human existence where we need to find ways of um, protecting the environment before it all... It all um, collapses in on itself so it's such an important theme and actually when we did it in 2013 I think if this was before Extinction Rebellion before any real big environmental activism um so actually it's um it's a sort of it's a story that's going to increase in importance and that was the theme that we really wanted to portray on stage which again is why we worked with such uh, rudimentary, rudimentary rudimentary materials um of course the final versions looked a lot uh, a lot more exciting than the than the uh, workshop versions we've just shared with you guys but it's great to see where things come from I think and that was something that obviously you know inspired uh, Studio Ghibli I think when they saw our proposal with <laughs> scrappy scrappy bed sheet puppets. It, there were a lot of challenges doing it in both uh, the UK and Japan. Uh, in this instance we did it in uh, in English with an English cast or British cast should I say um, and um, we we didn't change a huge amount, to be honest. Um, we felt like it was really important to be uh, faithful to the original. Um, and the main things that got changed were all the modes of expression. So of course, it's not an anime, so you've got a lot of physical restrictions. Um, and so we had to think about how we were going to um, sort of get that, get that across. How, well, I mean, how do you even begin to, to do, a, do a, a scene with a giant exploding god? Uh, for example, and um, that you know that that was something that that was challenging. But we worked from the subtitle script. Um, that I think it was Neil Gaiman who who did that, um, and so we, we we had a very strong base from which to which to build. Yeah, we worked quite closely with the studios. Um, myself personally, it depends. I tend to be very involved at the beginning because uh, Whole Hog got creates its own pitches, and I will go in and I say this is the idea this is why it's going to be amazing. Please let us do it. The whole process can take a very long time. Um, I mean, the Garden of Words was first pitched four and a half years ago. 
and now it's been oh, it's God. been delayed several times for different reasons and obviously now it's everything is spectacularly delayed due to the the global situation um so yeah it can take a very long time it um the actual first permission uh, can be quite quick but the how on earth are you then going to take it from this into this stage production and how is all, how is the budgeting going to work is there going to be any money made and who makes it and all that sort of thing i mean for, for our part we're very much creatively focused but yeah, so it can take a very long time. Scripting is a really interesting one. It depends a lot on the project. Um, and also what we've moved to doing since uh, Princess Mononoke, for example, is when we're doing a production between the UK and Japan, we'll actually have a UK script in English and a British or British Japanese or British Asian cast. Um, and um, then they, they will do that in English. And then in Japan, we'll have a Japanese script with Japanese cast. So in that sense, it's almost like doing two productions because you've got very, very different, um, obviously completely different language, um, even though the culture is obviously the same. So we, we constantly have the challenge of how to not lose the integrity of the Japanese, particularly with a piece like The Garden of Words, which is rooted in you know, the Manyoshu poetry. So that's so important to get that right um so we yeah we basically spring off directly from the film script and a lot but a lot of the adaptation work happens in the workshop and rehearsal room where we um change dramatically how something is seen um and um yeah the scripts vary quite a lot depending on the production so for whole hog theater's work we tend to um try and very much capture what we think is the essence of the anime but we don't do that in the same way that say a 2.5D production would do. And that's because um, I think for a British audience taste in particular, there's always the question of why have you put this on stage? What is, what is it about it that works as a stage production? Um, so we might do something that is quite different from the original in terms of its interpretation, but is completely and utterly sort of taken from that idea. So for instance, with the Garden of Woods production, we, the Shinkai has so many characters that, that are not human. So like the rain in the Garden of Words is, is such a powerful uh, storyteller. So we're trying to bring that out with projection mapping as well as sort of physical elements. So there's kind of a life that's given to that that is quite different. Whereas perhaps in Japan, it might be more literally interpreted. Um, but yeah, when you see a 2.5D production, they are perfectly exactly as you as you see it which is another there's a beauty to that as well um so it really depends on the on the production um, and the wigs are epic and very expensive and gorgeous um colors something that whole hog is aiming to do with its anime adaptations is basically bring those worlds together so we want to say to the you know the anime and manga fan base hey guys we're making theater for you this is this is serious art um, so that's one of the reasons we want to put it in the theatre, because you've also, on the flip side, you've got the old guard of theatre um, producers and venues. Uh, it's, it is changing, but you will get people say to you, oh, an anime, oh, we want something with like a story. Uh, and of course, that whole raises the whole question. So, so for us, we kind of want a 50-50 sort of more traditional theatre um, audience and the fans um coming in because yes i think 2.5d on its own because it is so close to the original it's something that i think the theater sort of um what's the word i don't know etiquette is that you, you you do something different with it if you're putting it on the stage you don't just copy it and it's sort of seen as negative to do that so i think there's a sort of an honoring and a joy of watching the anime exactly as it is which happens with 2.5d and whole hogs looking for somewhere in between so that the fans come in and go oh, they picked up on that Easter egg that happens in, in uh, uh, I don't know, um, your name, that, you know, and that, that sort of little details like that, that, that actually the fans already appreciate. But it's done in a highly theatrical way um, that also proves to the theatre audience that this, this, is, this is art. This is stuff that is, is the most fantastic thing. And it's not just incredibly popular and such an important part of Japanese culture to the world. It's like a door to Jap Japan. You know, most people who've never been here, they, they might come to it through anime. Um, but not only that, it actually is, um, it's, it's sort of dis disproving the idea that anime is, um, it's, it's not a, um, a genre. It's, it's a medium.
So it's just a way of expressing, but people look at it and think, oh, it's like violent or it's girls in short skirts or it's, or it's a bit weird. And uh, that's not what it's about. Obviously there are those things and, and I'm sure many, many people love those as much as the other stuff. But um, so yeah, it's all about bringing those different fan groups, those different types of people into the auditorium and kind of opening up what the theater is. I think anime has huge potential on stage in that regard. So I mean, I personally, um, prefer working on the non-musical productions um, just because that's my more my area of expertise and with the musical you've just got so many more things to be dealing with um, and the production schedules are always very tight I think in general in theatre but they are even tighter here if possible and so you've got especially if you're working with an idol group so for the bigger here the biggest productions are the musicals and if you've got an idol group in so whilst they're used to singing and dancing they're not used to theatre some of you know like some of the pieces I've worked on that's been their first time so it means that some of the other creative elements don't get perhaps the same amount of time that they would normally so um certainly for me I'm I'm more of a fan of working on the productions that don't have the musical element because it gives you that little bit more time to hone the other the other creative methods um uh, and yeah just I think in terms of how they differ like a 2.5d show um a particularly musical there's going to be thousands of people in the room in Japan and they're all going to be, it's going to be a very, very tight schedule. Um, whereas um, with sort of uh, perhaps whole hog sort of way of working, it's more of a workshop based piece. So we're working very closely with the actors um, and it's kind of developed quite naturally in the room. I think the bigger you go, the more, the more um, famous the actors, the more regimented it is. Um, and there's also obviously big difference between the UK rehearsal method processes and the Japan rehearsal processes, which are much more formal. Um, so that's always um, a great delight to work with Japanese actors who aren't used to being perhaps called by their first names or rolling around the floor doing, <laughs> doing movement exercises and things like that. So that's a great, that's been a great delight for me to, to do. So one brilliant thing that has come out of the pandemic is a new online platform called Theatre Complex or Shieta Complexu. And that has been founded by a wonderful theatre practitioner here in Tokyo called Makoto Matsuda. And he heads up Naoke Planning as well as the Japan 2.5D Musical Association. Uh, and this is in response to the pandemic to try and save the stage keep it going until until we can stage live works again. Now, the 2.5D Musical Association is all about sharing these works internationally. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, the platform is only available in Japan, but that is something that they will hopefully expand in the future. Uh, and it's a really exciting space. You can go, you can rent all the titles we've been talking about today, um, much as you would on Amazon Prime or something like that. And it's really exciting and at the moment um obviously I have been working on the garden of words production that's now been postponed indefinitely um but i'm also working on new always working on new proposals um for projects and another really positive thing that can be said about the covid 19 situation is that it's sort of forcing you to think outside the box so actually uh, a lot of the proposals i'm making for um, other anime stage adaptations are now taking into account the sort of social distancing. So, you know, like I think about outdoor theatre, thinking about broadcasting internationally and that kind of thing. So I can't reveal anything, but that's what I'm working on doing, trying to make theatre works that work with the anime that, that, or, or manga that we want to work with, but also that speak to a post-COVID world and actually can work even if we are in an ongoing pandemic. So I think that's the way we have to think about it. The Garden of Words stage production was due to be on this year, but has been postponed due to the pandemic. Uh, but fingers crossed, it will be on next year at the Park Theatre in London. Uh, and it's going to be a world premiere. So we are super excited about that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. It's been such a pleasure to be part of this. And we're going to have some really exciting content, hopefully, for you soon.